Welcome to an ongoing sewing report series to sew McCall's M6044 men's shirt pattern. In this episode, we're focusing on the construction of the collar and cuffs for view B. You'll find links to my favorite garment sewing supplies below. First, let's cut out the pattern pieces. For each shirt, you'll need two mirrored collar pieces and four cuff pieces total. The inside of the cuffs and collar band feature contrasting fabric for a fun accent. Weights keep the pattern tissue in place, making it easier to cut the fabric with a rotary cutter. I found it easier to use a water-soluble pen for all the pattern markings. Now, some of these pieces need stabilization by fusing interfacing to them. This is professional-grade, lightly crisp and flexible woven, fusible interfacing purchased from Fashion Sewing Supply. Lots of sewists rave about this online shop, and I have to say, the quality doesn't disappoint. And here are all of my fused pattern pieces ready to sew. Let's start with the cuffs. The instructions call for you to fold in the edge of the non-interfaced inside piece, 5 eighths of an inch. Having a hot roller press perfect on hand really helps with this. There is a small pleat on the sleeve that you will need to baste into place. Then on to sewing the cuff pieces right sides together, leaving the long straight edge open. Trim the seam allowance down and turn right side out. Press with the iron for a crisp finish. And here's what the cuffs look like. Now you'll pin the outside of the cuff, that's the unfolded side, to the right side of the shirt. The length should match up with the sleeve a tad just inside the cuff ends. Get back at that sewing machine and stitch those pieces together. Trim the seam allowance with scissors. Here's where the magic is. When you flip the cuff out and away from the sleeve, the inside will already be tucked under because of that earlier step of folding it in. I thought this was pretty ingenious of the instructions. I figured out that if I apply Fabri-Tac glue to the sleeve just past the stitch line, it will keep that cuff in place. You'll want the cuff to sit just outside the stitch line. Back at the sewing machine, edge stitch about a quarter inch in, and you will also enclose that glued portion permanently. A little while later, here I am sewing on a button after sewing a buttonhole. This is what your cuff will look like finished. All right, now we can tackle the shirt collar. I stay stitched the neckline so it didn't get distorted. Moving on to the collar stand, just like the cuffs, the instructions call for you to fold in the edge of the non-interfaced inside piece, 5 eighths of an inch, which is your standard seam allowance. right sides together, sew the long top edge of the collar pieces. Note that I made a big mistake in also folding in the edge of the non-interfaced side. Don't do this for the collar. Well, it looks like this in a few steps here, I ended up having to seam rip the entire collar and starting again. Here's a trick for getting perfect points. Take a piece of contrasting thread and nestle it into the seam with a loop outside the piece like you see here and put a little bit of space in between those pieces of thread. You'll see why later. Do this for both sides of the collar. 
Sew the shorter sides of the pieces with a short stitch length, like 1.8 or 2.0. Then trim the seam allowance and clip the corners. When you turn the collar right side out, pull on the two ends of the thread and hopefully the loop got caught in your stitching. This is why you wanna leave just a tiny bit of space in between those threads so that you give it a place to catch with your stitching. This will create a pretty sharp point right there. Press the collar piece and top stitch around the edges. Attach the collar to the stand pieces, lining up the markings and pinning into place. Trim down the folded edge of the inside, that's the contrasting fabric of that collar band. Sew all these pieces together with a standard seam allowance. Trim the seam allowance. Flip right side out and press. Pin the outside of the collar band, that's the unfolded side, to the right side of the shirt neckline. The length should match up with the neckline a tad inside those collar band ends. Get back at the sewing machine and stitch those pieces together. Trim the seam allowance with scissors. Flip the collar band over the shirt neck and bust out that Fabri-Tec glue again to secure the pieces in place until you top stitch around the edges. Notice that I did use contrasting thread for the dark blue chambray shirt, but the stitching would have been a lot less noticeable had I used matching thread. I just didn't have any, otherwise I would have. And check out the finished shirt collar, doesn't look too shabby if I do say so myself. Thanks for watching and check back for more videos on sewing a collared shirt. I'm Jennifer Moore for The Sewing Report and I'll see you next time.